Jeff Hayes. I'm Anna Quincy. And I'm Bernie Clevens. So, McDonald's chose polystyrene containers to wrap their burgers. This is a plastic, um, plastic container. It's an oil byproduct. Um, the practicality is it keeps hamburgers warm, it does not absorb grease, and it's lightweight. All of these factors um, are aesthetically pleasing to the consumer. Um, they were encouraged to switch to paperboard containers to... Um, to store their hamburgers because they um, are paper-based, therefore they're biodegradable. And um, but another a, a disadvantage to them is that they're not as practical because they do absorb the grease of the hamburger, um, but they do not emit le um, the harmful fumes that are emitted when um, the poly the polystyrene container is produced. Yes, yours. Um, we have found that there are three primary stakeholders in this issue, um, one being McDonald's, uh, the other manufacturers, and um, one being the environment as a whole. Um, and there uh, is one auxiliary stake, uh, stakeholder uh, being the consumers. Let's go back to Bernie. Our stance on this issue was that the uh, Pro-Environmental Packaging Council was unethical in tar targeting children in its campaign because they're not able to fully understand the issues um, involved with the, the whole subject. Instead, we believe that the Pro-Environmental Packaging Council should have addressed the McDonald's Corporation directly before releasing such campaigns. Now, to first analyze uh, McDonald's motives, um, their, their goal is to make a profit. Uh, you make a profit by pleasing the customers, by providing a positive public image, and by creating the best po uh, possible product. Um, but you can do this by, um, you know, having the best product, which um, for their purposes, the polystyrene um, uh, containers, uh, better uh, preserve their uh, their product, the Big Mac. Um, they keep the uh, product warm, and uh, it keeps the uh, um, the grease from absorbing, which is a um, it's it's not as uh, ex uh, aesthetically pleasing to the customer when they see just a a gross box full of grease. <laughs> Um, they won't want to continue buying from this company. Um, the uh, the poly or the uh, the <laughs> the motives of the poly styrene uh, manufacturers they're also to sell a product and they um, they really worked on their public image in a, a more positive way in opening. Seven, um, and having recycling plants to recycle their products, which is um, a great environmental an environmental aspect of it that um, that helps. I mean, that just that helps sell it. Uh, and and they need this because um, polystyrene does have a a negative connotation. Uh, it, it is a plastic. It is, does not biodegrade quick enough um, and and the in the public eye these are all seen as negative effects but with the you know trying to help your own self image uh, by you know using uh, recycling it, it greater you know um, advances their um, their productivity and their um, public image and then we go into the uh, paper port the paperboard manufacturers. The, then, like any company, its goal is to sell a product to make that profit. But unlike uh, polystyrene, they don't have such a negative public image. It's much more positive because it's it's a biodegradable substance. So, to sell their product instead of attempting to increase their uh, improve their public image by setting a uh, recycling campaign, they went through um, the. Uh, name here, the Pro-Environmental Packaging Council to uh, start the Send It Back campaign, which was targeted at children, to uh, help 
to uh, sell the product to McDonald's. They wanted the children to boycott the polystyrene packaging. In this campaign, they were uh, they had a great deal of bias towards the negative effects of polystyrene. They did not um, portray. Uh, polystyrene and uh, paperboard in the same light. They showed the neg they uh, outlined they outlined the um, negative effects of um, polystyrene much more than the actual practicality of the paperboard. Um, and then we come to the uh, ethical conflict between cutting down trees and producing toxic fumes, where the polystyrene produced atrocious toxic fumes in creating the paper product we have to mow down forces in order to make that paper. Um, the Stanford, the, uh, Stanford uh, Research Institute concluded that uh, there was no uh, benefit to using paper products over the polystyrene and um, that the, uh, the paper product is no more uh, ecological than the polystyrene. Also, uh, we had to discuss the concept of the ethical, the actual ethical conflict between cutting down trees and producing toxic fumes in a scientific concept, because we believe that regardless of how hard we try, uh, producing the wood product is going to be considerably harder than refining the process to make polystyrene. Every day, new chemical processes are developed. And we believe that we can reduce the toxic fume emissions through uh, uh, improved uh, procedures. Right. Um, uh, another large issue is um, uh, with the consumers themselves. Though they don't necessarily have a direct effect uh, or uh, a direct um, uh, effect on them, uh, whether uh, polystyrene or paperboard is used as much, um, they're still they are sort of the victim in in um, uh, in this situation. Uh, the children are being manipulated. Uh, there have been uh, there are obvious uh, propaganda type techniques such as vilification um, in any you know um, sort of uh, situation where one larger um, group is trying to convince others uh, to. Um, you know, conform to their ideas. If your ideas are not as strong, you tear down the other other side. You vilify them, make them the enemy, and then, in um, though yours may your idea may not be any better, it still seems better with the darker side um, against it. Uh, the there still is a slight difference in um, uh, e each product. The polystyrene does um, have a, a more of a aesthetically pleasing um, uh, result uh, to the consumer. They they want to buy more of something that doesn't look greasy and disgusting. Um, uh, yeah. I'll pass it over. Pass it over. Do I have yeah, who's next one? Okay. Um, really, um, concluding this, the uh, the Pro Environment pa Environmental Packaging Council was unethical in how they handled um, this entire <laughs> campaign. They they vilified um, <laughs> they vilified the um, the other product and <coughs> excuse me <coughs> and they um, they also targeted children, which isn't quite right. <coughs> um, next is McDonald's, their actions to switch is because they're concerned about their own business. At the time, they were, they were not worried about whether it was uh, the polystyrene or the paper, which was better. But instead, they were um, worried about the kids. The kids looked at McDonald's and said, you know, you guys are villains, you guys are, you know, the product you're using is not good for us. So McDonald's says that's the last thing we want, so that's why they switched their image immediately. Can I take yes. a um, Talking about McDonald's concerns, um, we thought about Benjamin from the, from the Orwellian novel Animal Farm. 
Uh, Benjamin is apathetic towards everything that's going on. He doesn't feel that he really has a concern. And we feel that this is uh, along the same lines. Um, McDonald's does not seem to particularly care about the environment. It doesn't seem to affect them. Uh, they care more about the bottom line of selling their product. They don't care about the, uh, the environment. In uh, Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, uh, that would be on a very low level. They care about the safety of their product. They care about the security of their investments more than the uh, utmost level of the uh, morality of maintaining a clean environment for everyone. Yeah. All right, so to uh, prevent any of this uh, from happening in the future, we want the government to regulate lobbyists and we want them to be concerned about the indoctrination of children. Um, all right. In terms of um, regulating lobbyists, we want them to um, protect children from organizations that have an ulterior motive. In referring to children's organizations, should have the mo the motive of the benefit of the child. But in cases like this, when the organization all they have in mind is the success of themselves, um, with the children at stake. That's wrong, and we believe the government needs to step in and prevent that from happening. Uh, just thank you very much for uh, uh, for listening to our presentation. Any questions? You raised an interesting point there at the end about <coughs> regulation, uh, but could I ask what if regulations were introduced regarding packaging of food products itself? How would McDonald's respond? How would this change? The whole argument that we're analyzing this afternoon. Um, well, it, it could. Could you repeat, could you repeat, could you repeat that? Question? Yeah. <laughs> what if the government introduced regulations about consumer packaging of food products? What would McDonald's need to do to respond to that? Um, How would that change your analysis? Well, I, I don't think there'd be much of a difference in. Um, uh, well, uh, no, I can take it. <laughs> well, we don't think that it would really be an ethical concern at that point, because then it would be more of a, just a straight legal concern. Because if there's a regulation that says you must use this as a, your product, I don't think that going against the law is really even a realistic ethical concern. They're just going to conform to what happens. They might have the legal, uh, they might approach it legally with what product they'd like, but it's much more likely that they would just conform to what's necessary as, a form, as opposed to just conforming to an individual um, consumer. Would it be better for the government to step in and regulate, or should it be left up to sort of voluntary initiatives and concerns of corporations about their environmental uh, standards? I think that if, um, if proper, you know, uh, campaigning techniques, proper, uh, uh, you know, e ethical um, decisions were made in this, then, uh, you know, proper or, or regular uh, competition um, between the, the two, uh, having McDonald's uh, decide what is better for their customers and what is better for them uh, as a company. Um, uh, it, it's just the basic idea of of um, uh, competition in in a free market economy. Um. If you regulate lobbyists and you have and you're concerned about indoctrination of children, I mean, aren't you guys treading on First Amendment issues? It, it it's just the the methods um, used when you um, y yes they they have the the freedom to to say what they say, but to uh, specifically go into to elementary schools and and to um, uh, to to talk to them uh, to children and and target them in in such a a it's just oh, difficult manner <laughs> for them to target elementary children. So, just is, are you, in your conclusion with regards to McDonald's is. The ethical dilemma that you see not as much with McDonald's as it is more with the packaging council? Yes. yes. Do you find that McDonald's did anything wrong? We believe that McDonald's did do something wrong in just going with the consumer because um, they actually knew that the, uh, the polystyrene packaging was better for the environment. So we believe that they should have somehow confronted the consumer and 
either through a different a auxiliary campaign um, explain to them the benefits of the, their packaging. Is that because you said that their primary stakeholder was the environment and not the consumer? Can you repeat the question? Again, you said yeah. that your, their primary stakeholders were the, was the environment and their secondary was the consumer. So that's where they stepped across the line? Well, I, do you want to take one, Bernie? Um, the... Well, that's not the that's not the stakeholder of McDonald's. That's the stakeholders of changing the um, product, right? Yeah. Yes. All right. That's sorry about. It. That's our fault. We're not saying oh, okay. that McDonald's yeah. cares more about yeah. the environment than its consumers. Yeah. No. The, the consumers. Obviously. All right. Yeah. The, the the consumers are the number one priority of McDonald's more than the environment because when the send it back campaign was released, instead of McDonald's talking about the environment, they said, "Okay, children, if that's what you think, we'll change it." Because they're worried with the playhouses. I mean, obviously, children are their main target. So they just want to make any modifications so that the, they'll continue to have uh, children as their consumers. Do you think there are ethical issues with uh, them just simply uh, corresponding to public opinion rather than leading it when Um, I think as a market leader, McDonald's sh should show some sort of initiative to um, promote the uh, environment overall. That should not be its primary motive. Obviously, its primary motive should always be to maintain its profit. But as a leader, it would help improve its own public image if it were to be a, uh, just the leader in uh, g more green production. How much market share should they give up to do? Um, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't know specifically. It would have to. It would. It would have to be on a more specific basis for uh, each like individual implementation. What What would you all do if you were um, in charge of McDonald's? What What would you have done in this situation? Or or in in this, in this case? Um, I actually. Well. From a business standpoint, I may have just gone with, the McDo with what McDonald's actually did because they, I mean, they could have either started their own campaign, which would cost a lot more money to, um, to counteract the claims that the, um, that the Pro-Environmental Packaging Council was saying, but um, ethically they should have said, and I th <laughs> it would have been kind of a dry, I think I would have made more of a, or I would have made more of a fight towards um, fighting for the poly, polyethno packaging. Uh, make like a um, small movement to try to promote polyethene, but but promote uh, the economics of the company overall. I mean, you can't let your company go bankrupt over a small issue like this. Not a small issue per se, but a uh, issue that shouldn't be the life and death of your company. Yeah, the, the reality is because McDonald's is such a large company, no matter what they do, they're, they're going to be using lots of resources and, and consuming, uh, uh, you know, uh, consuming lots of resources and, and emitting things that they don't, you know, people don't generally want in their air or water or uh, what have you. But um, the thing is... Because that is always an issue, uh, they don't worry about that. As as a company, they're not worried about the the, um, the ecological issues because, or they're more worried about it because their consumers are worried about it. Um, because their their consumers are the ones that want uh, to see more green. Things though it may not make that much of a difference, they're in their consumer's eye. Um, it, it it really does make a difference. Here, I, I understand what you're saying. I think what he's trying to say that is because 
the consumers um, have the environmental concern, McDonald's says, yeah, sure, we have an environmental concern too. And therefore they change that because their main concern is not whether the environment's good or not, but whether they're making profit. And they know that if they match um, their actions with the ideas of the consumer, then their profits will, will increase. Then they'll maximize their profits. Um, there are major uh, companies out there. Um, what are like the more natural food places that you can think of? Like, I can't think of any off the like like Whole Foods um, has products that cost considerably more than um, say Publix. Like the food, the food there, it's essentially the same thing. It has uh, a more green atmosphere to it, and they end up passing that along to their consumer. Is what you'd have to do is you'd have to just run uh, test markets to see at what point would is it uh, would the ideas of the greenness and the economics coincide. Um, I think that test mar test markets are probably the best way to determine that. I think that um, it's not it's not unethical because because um, since it is more expensive to create food that is more or, um, more natural and not just pump it um, pump it up with chemicals that make it grow bigger and grow faster. I think that it it has to cost them more, so they have to charge more to make a profit. So I don't think it's unethical that they charge more for it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.